So hopefully you've already gotten the basic example working, so let's actually do it from scratch. I'm going to delete the preloader.as file and we're going to redo it from the very beginning. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our class um, preloader. We're going to have it extend a movie clip object so that our preloader actually acts like a movie clip. And then we want to create our static function main. And you're going to remember when we ran our mtask command, I used the dash main uh, switch, which means that the first thing when we run this, it's going to run static function main. And what I'm doing there is I'm passing root, and I'm going to show you the mtask tutorial actually shows that you should um, declare this in your uh, class data members application. So let's do that. Okay, application of type preloader. So we're creating a new instance of our the class that we're actually running inside of. And now we're going to create the class constructor, uh, the preloader, which target is actually underscore root. We're going to assimilate root like is explained in Ariel Balkan's blog. And the tutorial on doing this on OS Flash talks about how the author has to do everything in onload. And what this is doing is this is making it so you don't have to do everything in onload. And now we're going to get the name of the FOV file that we want to be played. We're going to add that as a class data member because we want to have access to it in each function in our class. So, okay, what was the name of that again? Uh, okay, FLV example. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to import uh, the video display class. And let me show you that. Uh, okay. We've got it imported. Because now we're going to add our video display object. And you'll see that in our SWF mill library. There it is right there. This is a little different because it's actually a class that takes the place of a, like a standard library object. So let's set the location and set the size to be the width of the stage and the height, which is 288 by 190. And you can see that in the SWF mill library, assets.xml. So okay, if the stream, if the name is not blank, we're going to play the the FLV right away but we're actually going to pause it right away because Firefox will ignore the buffer time anyway so we're just going to pause it until our preloader is done and take a look in here inside of the video display.as you'll see the functions that I've actually been running right here setting the size the location everything are actually functions inside of the video display.as class on which Philippe did a really good job in writing and I have links to that original tutorial in the, the thing on my site. So remember we loaded this on layer 0 and you want to keep everything on different layers or else they won't display correctly. So we're going to load the empty progress bar which is a JPEG which I've included in the sample directory on layer 1 and we want a class data member for that because we want to access it outside of or have access to it in every function. Okay, so let's use attach movie, progress outline, and this is the ID from the SWF mill library. And see, there it is, progress outline corresponds to the JPEG in the library. So, okay, pass that the name of our class data member on layer one. And then we're going to just set some parameters of that. We're going to set its um, X position to the stage. We're going to try and center this perfectly in the center. So these are what this, these calculations correspond to. Okay. Height divided by 2. And now what we want to do is we want to put the percentage full bar that we're going to extend dynamically throughout the application on layer 2 but because we don't want those to overlap. Add the class data member because we want to manipulate this as well in every function of the class. We're going to use attach movie again. See progress full right there. 
when you look in the SWF mill library again, you'll see the ID is progressful for progressful.jpg. And then import it on layer two. And okay, now that'll be added to the stage on layer two. And we're going to set the examples again. We're going to make it be exactly on top of uh, the progress outline bar, but give it a width of nothing. And we're going to keep extending that so it actually looks like it's progressing. But actually, we're just revealing more and more of the picture as we go along. So, okay, let's set the width to nothing, the X scale. Okay. Now we want to create a text box for the FOV loaded. You don't need anything in your library for this, so we're just going to create a new text format to begin with. Arial, um, size 10, give it a white color, and we're going to make it bold too by setting that true. We want to, like everything else, access this outside of our uh, all of our functions in our class, so we add it as a class data member. Okay, right here we're actually creating and adding the text field to the stage on layer 3, and I'm actually adding it directly below the progress bars right here. Okay. We're going to append that text format, the Arial. And now we're going to have the text be an initial example or initial value of 0%. Now we're going to set the interval to check um, how much you load the percentage. And we need to give an ID to that interval. And it's kind of like a file handle in another programming language. So there's our interval. And we're going to have it call a function called check loaded percentage that we haven't created yet with a value of 500 milliseconds and you're gonna see that we're actually passing the stream from the video display as class there it is so when we say display dot stream right here we're actually passing the, the video stream that we currently have paused so let's create the check loaded percentage function that would be called every 500 milliseconds give it a parameter of the net stream and now what I'm doing here is I'm getting the actual size and bytes of the video because um, netstream.bytes total won't work in IE until our video is actually loaded. So I'm just going to put it in here to make it easier, the total size of the video. And then we're going to calculate the percentage based on the bytes we have currently loaded and the total size. Um, and then when that gets to be 100, oh, wait a second, I got to increase the percentage number. So we have it set to zero right now, but as it calls this function over and over again, we're going to actually keep increasing that. And then we want to increase the width of our fully loaded progress bar. Not too tough here, change that X scale. Let's see. Okay. And then if our loaded percentage is 100, we're going to actually set our text to nothing, remove the progress outline and progress full bars, and then unpause the stream, and then clear the interval that we've sent so we don't want to call this function over and over again anymore, or else we're just going to leave the stream paused. And now what I'm going to do is actually compile this um, we, we got to use SWF mill first to create our SWF with the library assets. So let's do that from assets.xml. Okay, and you look. Oh, there it is. And now we're going to compile our code that we've just written and inject it back in to that SWF. And see preloader and video display and then the main. So that's going to go for static main first, that's the first thing that'll be executed. And okay, there's the FOV player, it's larger. And here we go, it's working. So thanks a lot for checking out the tutorial. And if you're interested in checking out more things like this, you can head on over to um, my website, technogumbo.net.